Hey guys, it's Misa, and I wanted to do that watercolor tutorial many of you have been asking me about. Um, and I've got a couple different types of watercolor I'm going to um, go over and use today to just show you how they look different. And um, okay, let's get started. Um, the first thing uh, I wanna show you is just all the materials that I have. So first, um, I have this big, kind of star around here, but we're gonna do this backer, um, like this iridescent one that I used um, for these stars. So it's just kind of all kinds of different colors. It's some iridescent watercolor um, paint palette that I used, um, not super expensive. It was like 10 or $12. Um, I will post pictures of products and or links at the bottom of the thread, depending on what group I'm posting in um, and what their rules are. So I uh, don't worry, I won't leave you hanging on kind of the names of the products. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. We're also gonna use some liquid watercolor and do this um, kind of tie-dye looking background that I used for some of my like Easter um, rounds and, and tags. A lot of people asked me how I got the back. And so again, this is just liquid watercolor. So I'll do that one. Um, these are the liquid watercolors I have. They're Dandelion Paint Company. Um, they came in a kit, honestly. Uh, if I were to, uh, when I need to, um, order some more liquid watercolors, I'll probably just order them off dickblick.com. Um, I love the majority of their um, selection of art materials. A uh, little bit goes a long way. They're expensive, but they're really high in pigmentation. Um, so you get really vibrant colors without using a lot of your, um, of your watercolors. So um, the price, depending on how much you're using them, the price may be worth it to you. Okay. And then I'm just going to use, um, my daughter's, um, $2 and 99 cent Crayola, um, watercolors. She's three and a half. Um, she did this one yesterday. And so I just brought some kind of scrappies to kind of do the same thing just to show you with a cheap watercolor palette um, how you can do it. Or if you've just got the kids at home that like to do um, the crafty painty stuff, how you can support them in um, doing something that turns out really pretty. <clears throat> okay. Um, I have a couple of different brushes that are fiber and not, um, or they're, they're natural instead of plastic. So watercolor likes the, the natural hair brushes a little bit better. Um, I've got a couple nicer ones, but then also the one that just came in the Crayola um, paint packet too. So just a cheapie. Um, especially those of you who are doing kits, I think it's kind of important too, if you're trying to keep your costs down, um, you can do something like the Crayola and the cheapy brushes to keep your, to keep your costs down, um, but still see how it um, works out really nicely. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna show you um, is this shellac. Again, I'll post a picture, but when everything's dry, um, I seal it with a shellac. And this one, I often just rub on with a cloth. Um, so this is just an old white t-shirt. Okay. Um, so first let's do the big one. So again, we're doing this like iridescent watercolor one. So here I have this um, piece of white birch plywood. Um, I got it Smoky Hill. Um, and so the first thing I do is I just get the wood wet, not like dripping wet, but enough um, where it kind of like changes the color of the wood. So this isn't sopping. I guess it is dripping a little bit, but I just rub it on. Too wet and you will distort your wood a little bit. So you wanna be mindful of that but just enough to get the surface wet. Not so much that like water is pooling on top. The more water, the more you're gonna get that um, kind of oozy, uh, kind of bleeding, um, blended look with watercolor. Um, and to less water, then you're gonna um, be ha have a little bit more control if you wanted to do like a design or pattern. I kind of um, like the blended look because uh, it's easier and it's faster. And it looks pretty. Okay. And then I just used, I think this is Uli, O-O-L-Y. Okay. Um, 
and I've just got a little yogurt cup full of water here. And I used like this pink and purple, right? And then guys, I just kind of dollop it on. Like it's not, um, I don't try really hard to control the watercolor. The more water, um, also the less, uh, the less pigment, right? So if you want it really um, like a solid color, you would do less water and, and more of your paint pigment. If you want more of a wash, you're gonna use more water. Uh, watercolor is really hard to control. Um, so I think the trick is to have this expectation that you're just not gonna control it. Okay, so like, Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush just a little bit. I'm not gonna go crazy. It doesn't have to be completely free of pigment. Now I'm gonna move over to this blue. I'm just gonna, again, kind of spread it out. You can see, just kind of like pushing around the pigment a little bit. My wood is starting to dry, so I might just grab a little bit more water if I want to soften some of the edges. Right. A little bit more blue maybe. Um, watercolor, as probably many of you know, feels a little temperamental at times. Um, if you overwork it, it will just get muddy um, and your wood will just, um, wood or paper can even start to like the fibers come up. So I think that's where the like letting go of the expectation of control helps. A little bit more pigment of this one, just another blue color. You can also let it dry. Like if you feel like you didn't um, get enough pigment on it, but it's starting to feel like it's, um, turning muddy or something. You could also like let it dry and try and do another kind of light wash over it if you wanted to. So I'm gonna circle back to the kind of pink and purple, maybe with some more purple. Just pick up a lot more pigment. Maybe a little bit more of this blue. I think I use green too, so maybe I'll dip into some of that. Sometimes I just kind of like touch it on and then kind of try to blend it really lightly and then just kind of let the watercolor soften itself as it kind of travels through the water that's on your wood. Maybe some of this green here. Bigger pieces, I think, are a little harder because you have um, the the water it drying too. So just kind of working quickly, and then I think I did this blue down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna let this one dry now. You can see it just took a couple of minutes. Um, and as it dries, it will like soften a little bit. I'll take some pictures so we can see how it kind of um, dried up. Okay, so that's that one. All right, the next one I will do will be these little, <coughs> excuse me, these little Easter guys. You can see this little backer. And again, I may just be crazy right now and not even change out my water. Um, I just got this wet. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I haven't even set up my paint. Um, 
but so it looks like I use like orange and yellow and magenta and blue. So for this one, I'm just gonna use this little paint palette. And I have these guys, so I'm just going to do maybe two drops of yellow and one drop of orange. I don't think I used green, I used magenta. And I used the azure blue. So I'm just using a drop. Um, and this will actually probably be too much. I'll be wasting some. So, um, and then I'll use just this little cheap guy. Put that away. Okay. So the thing, um, if, especially if you want to get the same um, uh, color or saturation um, each time, like if you get something that you like, a trick or just, you know, something you can do is um, you just keep track of how many drops of paint to how many drops of water. So um, I'm just going to put a couple drops of water in here. So two, three, four, five, um, one, two, three. The yellow is a little um, softer, so I'm just going to put two in there. And then, so anyway, if you ever just want to ever recreate, um, like the same, um, wash, you can just do it that way. Okay. So I might get this wet again. Sorry guys. Tutorials just, um, aren't something I do very often. So hang in there with me. Okay. So again, I've just wetted the wood. It has like a little bit of a sheen to it, but it doesn't have any puddles or anything. Um, and then just kind of load up my, my brush with paint water. Um, and I just kind of like drop it on like almost even like little dots. I was just, when I did this, I was like thinking of like a speckled egg or something and rinse my brush and maybe I'll like grab the yellow and kind of bring that in again. I'm just kind of like tapping it on. Um, I'll bring it a little closer maybe. So like, yeah. So if it feels too light for you, you could add like another little drop of paint. I guess I kind of watered these down a lot. Oops. Um, if it feels like it's too much water and you need to kind of dampen some off, you can do it like that or the paper towel. And then the blue is a little bit brighter. So And because of the yellow and the orange, it's going to turn green in some places. All right. Maybe a little bit more right there. Over here, maybe. Okay. So I'm just going to let that one dry. Um, use a little bit bigger brush for this. So for the tops I just did, I just picked a color. So like this bunny, I just painted it pink, grabbed a little water, grabbed the pink. Um, I did, I'm not even dampening the wood, I'm just painting it. You can see because it's just kind of a light wash, it's not um, interfering with my engrave at all. And then you can still kind of see the wood grain through it. Um, and it's got a little bit of a variation in pigment as it kind of goes around, but then it, it really kind of gives it that pastel-y um, kind of Easter look. So I think it's pretty. Clean this up a little bit. Okay, and this one I will make blue. So again, it, it soaks in and it sort of just looks like a stain. You can see I'm not being careful, I'm being quick. Um, 
so it's just kind of a real fast. I don't need to worry about my engrave at all. And so that's done. All right. Moving right along. Put this out of the way. Okay, now we're on to the little Crayola paint set. Um, here it is. I just want to like touch on a little color theory for this one. Um, so we hate it when our paint turns brown. We, we don't want it to turn brown, right? Um, so you know, complementary colors together are going to turn brown. So red and green together, brown. Next to each other, the red looks redder, the green looks greener. Mixed together, brown. Um, so yellow and purple together, brown. They, uh, next to each other, the yellow will look more yellow, purple will look more purple, it makes them pop, um, but mixed, mixed together, it's just brown. And then same with blue and orange, you're just gonna get brown. Um, <clears throat> so when you're selecting your colors, um, just keep that in mind, unless you're going for brown. Okay, so I'll just maybe do one or two of these. So again, it's just a little kind of leafy heart cut out not super crazy. I'm just going to wipe it down with some water. Just so that the watercolors will bleed and blend together nicely. Okay, again, just using the little Crayola brush. Um, all right, I'm gonna start with this like purpley color. That's what my kiddo used. It was really pretty. And so I'm just brushing it on kind of quickly. Where you start, um, where you drop your pigment, like the very first place, like I started right here, it's gonna be the heaviest kind of saturation of the pigment. And then as you pull it across the wood, it's gonna soften. Cause you're gonna run, you're gonna start to run out of pigment on your brush, but then also it's gonna hit the wood that is um, kind of saturated with water and it's gonna diffuse it a little bit. And so now let's do some orange. Just thought I would do this like purple, orange, yellow kind of ombre thing. So I'm just wiping on some orange. Probably just do this with a baby wipe too, guys. Maybe I'll try that. So some orange. I'm not being careful. I'm being kind of messy. I'm not really thinking about it too much. Okay, and I'm gonna The yellow is always the least amount of pigmentation, so I'm just trying to make this bright. Okay, so that one's done. Maybe we'll do one more and I'll think about other things I can share with you. Wiping it down. Okay, let's start with, I don't know, maybe this dark green. Um, so, the more so the more expensive the watercolor, the better the pigmentation and the higher the pigmentation is likely going to be. Um, so if you're kind of wondering um, why you might pay a little bit more or even sometimes a lot more, um, for watercolor, that's generally the reason. Um, again, I'm just kind of slopping it on, going kind of fast. More water, more paint. Okay. And maybe now, blue. So once these dry, I will just wipe on some of that um, shellac and they will get kind of glossy. I think I want more green here. So 
So I just wanted more pigmentation here, so I'm just kind of going over them again. I feel like the nice thing about watercolor is there's like, it's meant to look blotchy, because um, that's a watercolor look. Um, purple. And maybe these will be coasters, maybe it will be a garland, I haven't decided yet. But I like the purple. see that one okay all right I think that's all I wanted to show you some of these have started to dry so maybe we can kind of look at them a little bit so it's a notch in this piece of wood so so here's this one this one we did. Cute little chick. And then, oh, that blue is bright. Cute little bunny. Little, little basket tag. All right, and then I don't have anything to go on top of these, but you can see them a little bit better right here. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. I won't make this any longer, and I'll definitely um, post pictures or links to some of the products that I used um, so that you can look them up if you want. Okay. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.